Are you a fan of the eccentric actor Michael Moriarty? Well, what would you say about a movie where he goes up against himself by playing twin brothers? And what if that is set within a sleazy, nearly jello-like atmosphere? I am Thorstein from Cinema Terror, and I am happy to say that a movie like that actually exists, and it is called Bloodlink. Moriarty plays the brothers Craig and Keith Mannings. Craig is a calm, intelligent and charming guy, who seems to have done well for himself as a respected doctor. While his life has been going good, he starts to get an increasingly amount of violent visions. He believes that these visions might be connected to his twin brother Keith, who has not gone down the same path as Craig. Craig travels to Hamburg in Germany, where he believes Keith is currently staying. Keith has not had the same life as Craig, and he has turned out to be quite a psychopath. Their psychic connection makes Keith aware that Craig is coming for him, so he makes up a twisted plan to set up his twin brother for his twisted vicious acts, as he wants Craig to get a taste of how evil a man can truly be. You didn't kill me. My own brother whom I'm supposed to love. <sighs> the Italian and German co-production that was Bloodlink is basically the good old story of good twin versus evil twin. The story isn't remarkable at all in that aspect, but it is a serviceable premise for a Euro trailer with a twist of giallo to it. There's some incredibly weird, sexual and illogical twists and turns that will leave you either amused or scratching your head. I will say that you will have to have a taste for the more sleazy aspect of cinema if you're going to have some fun with Blood Link, because if you're here looking for story and characters that make any type of sense, then you got the wrong movie. A guy that looks like he had fun was the star Michael Moriarty. He is known for having an on-screen persona that always seems to be a bit off, and he has gained a bit of a cult fame due to his involvement in several of Larry Cohen's best work. Moriarty has to carry Blood Link, and he does it with pleasure. I never really been a fan of the guy, but I must admit that this film turned me around on him. He seems a bit off and weird as the good guy Craig, and as Keith he gets to go all out and be as insane as possible as this terrifying serial killer with an impotence problem. But isn't it gonna hurt your brilliant career to have a criminal for a brother? Huh? <laughs> I guess not, you can capitalize on it. You can make a study in depth of a warped mind. He becomes creepy and pathetic, making himself become an excellent bad guy and a great adversary to his good guy character. Moriarty is as engaging as you could ask any actor to be, and his work here made Bloodlink an enjoyable experience for me. While the story presented didn't impress me, there was some attempts at making Moriarty's characters be complex. The impotence of the Kid character was used as both the explanation of how he became this way and the ludicrous way he was brought down. And I'm not gonna spoil how that is done, but I doubt you would see it coming or expect the story to take such a bizarre turn. I guess it could only come from an Italian, and calling me of no surprise when I found out that director and co-screenwriter Alberto Di Martino was behind the even more insane Exorcist ripoff The Antichrist. I'm not sure if these two films are representative of the madness that Di Martino usually include in his movies, as these are the only ones I've seen out of his filmography of nearly 30 movies. But judging him on a pure entertainment level, he is 2 for 2 in my book, and I definitely need to check out more of his stuff. I could easily see one of his jellies being sleazy fun, as Bloodlink has plenty of that going on. And speaking of craziness, guess who pops up and actually gives a performance in Bloodlink? You sure you're okay? <laughs> you see? You never let your guard down with Phoenix, huh? Yeah, none other than cult legend Cameron Mitchell. He plays a retired fighter who has been able to accept that his stay in the spotlight is overdue to health issues. He was a patient of Craig a few years earlier, and believes that he has found his good old doctor in the town of Hamburg. It is however Keith that he comes across, and Keith takes great pleasure in destroying this poor old guy. It's fun that we get Mitchell in a good shape here, and you can't be a fan of these kind of B-movies if you don't appreciate King Cameron. Speaking of people to appreciate, the score here is actually done by none other than Ennio Morricone. But it isn't his best work, and I honestly didn't notice much about the music except that Morricone was credited for it. I know I might be hyping up Bloodlink a bit, so let me also warn you that while I found lots of enjoyment in the film, it will probably fall a bit on the boring side for the majority of regular horror fans. There's not much suspense or logic to be found, and unless you find Moriarty's acting as engaging as I did, then I doubt you will like this very much. The pacing is uneven, and the fact that the story is a bit lackluster and tired will turn many off from this film. But if you're into yerry trashy, weird stuff, then I think you should take your chances on Bloodlink. I know I enjoy this film way more than what I believe most others will, so keep that in mind while I give Bloodlink the fine score of 3.5 out of 5.
Have you seen this little weird film? What were your thoughts on it? And what do you think of Michael Moriarty in general? Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this review and want to hear me talk about the other DiMartino film I've seen, The Antichrist, then I do have a video review up on my channel for that one as well. Be warned though, as that is one of the earliest videos I did, and the quality is even worse than what I'm able to do today. That's all I got today, have a great day wherever in the world you are, and thank you for watching Cinema Terror.